If you love Greece and are looking for an opportunity to escape the throng of tourists that invade the islands, try heading north. It's an area full of surprises. Every turn in the road seems to bring new and different landscapes, with scenes that make you feel as if you've stepped back into time. Many tribes and different ethnic groups have passed this way, and their culture is reflected in the lives of the people who live here today. And from Xanthi to Castoria, the architecture is a visual lesson in history. In Castoria's old city, the house of Nervantis Ivaisis now serves as a folklore museum, and as you wander through the rooms you can imagine the lifestyle of the feudal society which flourished here during the middle centuries of Turkish rule. The fur merchants also built many churches, 54 of which are still standing. In the first period of the Byzantine Empire, before the separation of the Christian Church into the Western called Catholic and the Eastern called Orthodox, the churches normally were basilicas, long, huge churches with three or five aisles. The columns were monolithic, and the capitals decorating these uh, columns were decorated with the acanthus leaves. Acanthus is thistle. The evolution of religious art and architecture is perfectly illustrated throughout the region by churches whose origins span from the 11th to the 15th century. No other city on the Greek or Balkan coast is as old as the capital of Macedonia, Thessaloniki. It's an ideal base from which to explore the region. If you really want to step back into history, there are excellent archaeological sites to be found, which can be done as a day tour out of Saloniki. Alexander the Great was born here in Pella, the ancient capital of Macedonia in 356 BC. To the south and inland you can visit Virginia, where Alexander's father, Philip of Macedon, was assassinated in 336 BC. The late Professor Manilos Andronikos was the archaeologist privileged to discover Philip's tomb. The, the most unique uh, find was the wall painting, the frieze, because uh, for the first time we found an example of the great painting of the classical Greece. Equally amazing is the story of Professor Dimitri Pandermalis, who firmly believed that a swampland north of Mount Olympus might contain a major archaeological site. The first time I came here, I, had, uh, I felt something uh, in myself, <laughs> uh, something like emotion for this place. The place is beautiful, and uh, Dion means uh, this. It's a divine place, especially for the Olympic Zeus. Pandor Malis had been given three months funding for his project, and the time was up. It was a big desperation, and uh, we wanted to abandon the sector, and on the last day, <laughs> we found a marble head, and we said, okay, we continued. And originally, here, uh, we had the cult of uh, Artemis, and later we had the cult of uh, Isis, also as goddess of the childbirth. It was amazing to think that for over 2,000 years this site lay submerged in a swampland under six feet of water and mud. You can't help but be impressed by the sophistication of the art, the incredible mosaic floor and beautiful sculptures. But it's the remnants of the everyday lifestyle that you'll probably find remarkable. Here are lead pipes that carried water into private homes, waste disposal systems, public toilets and paved roads. It's incredible to imagine the society that flourished here 
over 2,000 years ago. And you might find yourself being more than casually interested in the lives of the Greek people today. In every area in Greece there are different kinds of olive trees. Uh, for example, here in Chalkidiki we have the biggest, uh, in the biggest size of olive, more for eating, not for oil. Zeus declared that hospitality is a virtue, and you have to go no further than a local restaurant to experience personal and friendly service. Every chef proudly opens his kitchen to your inspection and selection. Oh, it's a fish soup. For more information on today's destinations, visit our website on topoftheworld.net.